For the amateurs, men like Rishi Graywall, Alexi's little brother, a commitment today to take control back from the opportunistic pros. <laughs> we, we're going to win today. <laughs> All right, good. Hey, if we win, you can put it on, huh? All righty. If you do it, we'll do it, Rishi. But you won. And the amateurs go head-to-head -head with the most powerful cash men in the world. The beauty in cycling is that answers lie on the road. So watch now the man on the right of your screen. The man with ambition in his legs. It's the self-same Rishi Graywall. The starting line sprint is an amateur trick. He's trying it today against the best pros, and he's got nothing to lose. Dinkin second, content to wait. Andy Hampton from 7-Eleven as well. His man, Alex Stita, is with Graywall up ahead. And away they ride through the misty morning. Graywall pushing the tempo up the climb. He said he would win. Now he gets to prove it, and his team car gets permission to move ahead for a concert. Copy. John Fry, an amateur from Albuquerque, New Mexico, is in the breakaway group. Ray Waldo powering his way to the front. He wants this breakaway to make time on the field. He wants to get to Charlottesville way ahead of the rest. Full on to the top of the field because they set me speed up for the point yeah. From the top of the field, don't worry. Okay? Go hard to the top of the hill and then don't work, said Coach Hundred Beck. Here's real help for Graywall in the breakaway. His teammate, Paul McCormick. Now they have two men out of four. They can control the breakaway and do as they please. Paul McCormick is like Graywall. Lots of promise, lots to learn. Boys, class is in session. McCormick, too, has an older brother who rides for Coors Light. John Fry helping. The three amateurs will ride together, and Fry's specialty is time trialing. That will help quite a bit in this breakaway. But the seasoned 7-Eleven rider, Alex Stita, is along, and the pride of Coquitlam, British Columbia, should be right at home for the cold, wet fog up ahead. Say hello to Thornton Gap. Graywall tried this tactic in the Coors Classic last August. It didn't work then, but that was then. Alex Stita, the first North American ever to hold the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. And, and Stita, of course. coaches plot strategy Beck for crest and the US car Rishi Graywall will go ahead trying to get the sprint seconds the sprint points but Alex Dita that's his specialty we'll have to wait and see and there he goes up the hill Graywall gets the bonus Fry and the others can only watch and shake their heads the descent because what goes up must come down this will be torturous and dangerous on slick roads in cold weather high handling skills and absolute must for our breakaway group
follows the other. The breakaways have split up down the mountain, going 40, maybe 50 miles an hour. The lone figure way up ahead, the tiny figure, is our leader, Rishi Graywall. It's dry. Look. Stay away from the painting line. Yeah. Did you copy that, Go, Rishi, go. Right. Keep the cars back. If somebody goes down, I'll never see him. At mile 90 now, here's another man with ambition. An amateur, number 68 from the Celestial Seasonings team. John Tomac, he of mountain bike fame. Tomac, with 15 miles to go, hopes to stay away. But it will not happen. The Colombian Alvaro Mejia is along with him, and other riders, too. Nearing the end of the race, though, the Panasonic team, the strongest team in the race, one of the strongest in the world, determined to reel in the breakaways and set up their sprinter. And that's Eric Van Der Arden on the left of your screen, the man who would be champion. Davis Finney looks back, Van Der Arden on his wheel. And look who's at the front of the pack, Greg LeMond trying an attack. Feeling better, obviously. At the finish line, students from the University of Virginia await the sprint. Wind it up, Scott Gauguin would have been a hero, but not with this field, they're on the home stretch. Yeah. Davis Finney heading for the line on the right, Van Der Arden behind him. Panasonic, Panasonic, Van Der Arden, And the Belgian does it again. Second stage win in this Tour de Trump for Eric Van Der Aert. And Brian is with our winner. Eric, you're doing uh, one sprint at a time, uh, one half minute at a time, and slowly moving to the front. Yeah, maybe it's uh, the race one week too short for me, for the, uh, the whole stage. So you think you'll run out of days before you run out of sprint? Yeah, uh, maybe it's tomorrow. It's a hard day, but in the morning it's uh, the state and in the afternoon the time travel. Maybe I could die, uh, take a lot of seconds again. Yeah, I just couldn't like do it. You know, there's too many guys chasing. Too many. You probably saw, you know, there's 20, 30 guys going probably 35 miles an hour for half an hour to catch us. So we gave it our best shot and, you know, tried to make the pros chase, which they had to. I hope they're a little bit tired. <laughs> Not too tired to hold up the arm with the flowers and the victory. Eric Vanderard.